All right, so for this video, this is the second part of my tool check. Um, so this is a tool bag that I keep in my car. I don't necessarily carry it with me anywhere. Um, so the back story is I talked about in my first tool check video on my channel. Uh, this tough belt one, so this is the one I carry with me in and out of the plant and in the office uh, doing controls work, controls engineering work. Um, so this is my daily everyday carry one, and this is one that lives in my car. Um, so then if I get into situations where I need more specialized tools or, um, you know, uh, larger tools that I don't necessarily want to carry on me all the time, I carry them in this bag. And I got this nice cobalt camo bag when it was on sales. I think I got like 30 bucks. Um, so I like it so far. Um, I don't like carrying things on the outside, so that way I can just toss this in my car. Um, and not worry about tools falling off all the time. So on the outside here, I do have a couple of things on the front side. So this is the side I carry it with on my person. So absolutely nothing on this side to gouge into me or um, to catch on me or whatever. So this is the side you carry out away from you. Um, I have a Crescent, uh, I think it's the Night Eye uh, tape measure. Love this thing. Awesome. High contrast. You can see it pick up very well. Very stout, very strong, everything's reinforced on it, dense, awesome. I got a small outside pocket, I got a little brush for cleaning things. If I need to get some dust out of something or a grill or a filter area, I can do that. Uh, I got a paint marker, I got a pen here, that's all I lives in that pocket. Then I have a bracelet that also has a knife built into it, so this is like a box cutter blade that I use on opening packages or something. Uh, first got knives everywhere and you never know when you're going to need one. Uh, so rather have too many than not enough. So inside, uh, so doing with controls work, you're doing a lot of communications and electricals. So that's pretty much all my tools are towards. So I have a nice fluke meter. Uh, which one is this? Does it say right on it? Probably oh, doesn't say right on it. Uh, I think it's a fluke 87. That's what it's got on there. I'm not too familiar with this was one that was given to me free from work uh, so I use that guy for troubleshooting wires and tracing signals and ohming things out and continuity tests um, so I have the probes that it came with and then I have an auxiliary box that I bought um, that has a bunch of micro smaller probes in there so I can probe into smaller terminal holes um, there's some locking uh, probes on here so I can lock onto a wire and pinch it down a lot easier um, and then there's some injecting ones too for going into terminals. Uh, so those guys live on the back here. Uh, so this kind of showing inside. So I got probe kit, fluke meter, and then I got the initial probes that came with it. And then I have some uh, scrap wire here for wiring up 24 volts, which is really common in um, automation. You use work with 24 volts. Uh, to work with that wire, I have a feral crimping kit. So this guy has a crimper in there and then all the wire uh barrel sizes uh, depending on what size of wire you're working with and you normally crimp those that way you're not dealing with frayed wires when you're sticking them in you're jabbing them in terminals you're not crossing or shorting out onto another terminal um so i guess uh next one would be this tough built little clip utility tool um, so sometimes if i'm working a lot with marking things um, this is just a placeholder for throwing all these knives and stuff on, but I'll reconfigure this if I need to and stick it on my person. If I need to mark things or carry a couple tools with me, it's really easy to clip right on and off my belt. So he lives in there. Uh, hand tool wise, these are my free floating ones. So I have crescent, uh, adjustable wrench, uh, it works really well. Get down there, the, the jaws are really aggressive, so they do gouge whatever you're getting into. But it bites in real nice and deep, and I like that. Uh, comfortable grip, love those things. Uh, I just got a cheap uh, fencing pliers, so these are really good. So if I have a built-in hammer, if I need to whack on some things or break something free, um, and I can pry on something if I need to, and then you got pliers, of course. Um, or you're working with wire, those. I got cobalt, uh, cobalt linemans. Um, these work pretty well. They're they're pretty stout. Um, I'm liking them so far. They have a nice um, uh, cut out here for grabbing onto like a nut or something and then nice cutters on there too So you can crimp with some stuff with there get some nice leverage on there. I think these are like 8 inch ones uh, and Then I got a speed wrench. Uh, these work really good for when you're doing with uh, robotic welding 
uh, you'll go on the weld caps and put this on here and twist and break off the break free of the weld caps and replace those. So you'll you'll break those free and then you can smack on some new ones. That's mainly what I use those for. Uh, full Allen, uh, I got Cobalt Allen key set. So I got both metric and Imperial. Got those. We got Husky star bits with security holes in them. Those work really well. Um, Sometimes, like a lot of ABB robots, uh, they use a lot of star bits, so when you're taking part ABB cabinet stuff, replacing parts, uh, the star bits are really helpful there. And these are cost, you know, really cost effective. Uh, larger side cutters, so I got cobalt side cutters, so if you have break some really large zip, uh, zip ties free, uh, these work really well, or you're cutting some cable or something. Locking pliers. Some cheapy ones, some placeholder magnets. So this is awesome. I always carry a retrieval magnet on you, so that way if you drop a nut somewhere or a bolt or something, you can fish it out. Highly recommend carrying one of those. Uh, small adjustable wrench. So I have um, another one that's similar size that lives in my uh, everyday carry bag. Uh, so if I need to pair something up, I have another one as a backup. Um, these work really well for getting on proc switches and breaking free the nut that retains the proc switch. And then you only, there's normally two of them on there, so you're pinching a piece of metal that is mounted to. So if you break one free, then you can loosen both up and adjust it as you need and lock it back down. Uh, separator players, and they're flippable ones, so if you need to move some uh, retaining clips or something like that, you know, it's really crucial that you only have one. There's only one tool that does it, uh, it's really hard to do all the things. Yeah, full pick set. So this cheap pick set. So if you have to fish something out, um, you got all kinds of different angles. So you got full pick set there. These work really well. Like if you're working with pins, you're, you're pinning a connector. You can use these for pushing the pins out. Um, you can get in there with different angles and get them out. Uh, this is a cobalt handle that goes with the Allen key set. So these give you higher leverage with those. You pair with it. Works really well. Uh, I got a couple of these tool bags. Uh, this one has electrical tape, spool of Velcro, Teflon tape, uh, steel wire. Teflon tape you use for piping, like air and water piping around uh, automation equipment. Uh, solder kit. So a lot of times if you have to rewire something and you do have to solder, uh, it's nice to have this. And then I also have heat shrink tubes in there. You don't really use these in automation. Um, I just have these floating around, so I threw them in the bag and I you know, have them there if I need them. Um, but normally you go to terminal strips, so that's not really common to use. You just go to terminal, so you don't terminate with those. Uh, let's see. Another tool bag in here. So this is a, a five port, um, I think it's five port network switch. So if you need to connect to a machine or a couple different things temporarily, this is a good temporary solution for getting them up and running, and then you'll have. Um, you know, IP67 version that you replace it with later. And then the very bottom here, I have a full kit um, for pin push out tools. So if you have to rewire a connector, um, sometimes they have barbed pins in there. So they'll have ones like these where they're tubes, so they go in there, push the barbs back together so you can push the pins out. Um, a lot of robots uh, use those barbed connectors or barbed pins in their connectors to go into the robot base or um, to the robot controller. So these are really, uh, really valuable. So when you need them, you absolutely need them. You can't fudge it with pinching pliers or pinching paper clips or whatever. You need these special ones. Uh, I got these really cheap on Amazon. If you just, uh, you know, search pin push out tools, you'll find like a multi connect or multi pack one of these. So these all came in one kit. Um, so just get some things that way uh, when you do run into that issue if you're working with robots and you have to repin them because uh, a lot of times you'll run into um, where integrators were trying to push the connector in and they don't have it quite clocked right and they just like hit a wall and they're like pushing on it pushing on it and they'll bend the pins and they'll break them and that's where you need these tools to pop those barbed pins out and replace them and it sucks real bad but when you have it you need it when you need you have it so I should say sorry um, so yeah that's just my my pretty much my heavy hitting bag um, like I said these are all heavier tools so I don't want to carry on me all the time 
So I'll leave them in this bag, and then if I need it in a plant, I can just grab this bag out of my car and go into the plant and uh, get to work. Um, so this is my inventory check of my tools. I just kind of share that with you, and um, you know, I continue to, uh, to work for you know finding new tools that I like and phasing some ones out that I don't. Um, most of these I like pretty well, but you know I always keep an open mind, new horizons, and new tools. So we'll see you later.